Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today we are going to start on lesson two on our journey to become proficient in SQL. This lesson is going to start off telling you everything you need to know about the select clause. So within this lesson, we are going to be using the Chinook database over here on the right hand side of my screen in SQLite Studio. If you were unable to download this database with all of our practice tables, please, please, please look at lesson one. I'll have a link in the description to lesson one so that you can get the tables in the database uploaded in SQLite so that you can play around and code along with me. So to get started on SQL, we're going to start off with what does SQL stand for? So it stands for a structured query language. It's standardized relational database query tool. This language is used in many, many, many software products and certain software products have added their own bells and whistles that's unique to that software. So everything is not completely portable when it comes to these softwares adding their own unique extensions. So the standard in the middle is ANSI SQL, and that's the standard SQL. However, software such as MySQL, SAS, SQLite, Oracle, they have added their own extensions that is needed for their products, okay? So those extensions are not gonna be transferable from one software to another, which means the extensions in SAS are not gonna work in SQLite. The extensions in SQLite is not gonna work in Oracle. So to know a little bit more about those SQL extensions, look up the documentation of that software to see what they use, what they have enhanced, what they have deleted, et cetera. But for the most part, as we go through these lessons, we're gonna stick with standard conventions that are used across all softwares, okay? So in this example, SQLite, they have their own enhancements. You can look at their documentation online, but what's not going to change is the select from where having by, order by, group by. Those are standard clauses that you can use within any software, okay? So we're gonna focus on more of those universal statements. So to get started, we talk about comments. So how do we say comments in SQL and SQLite? So a one line comment is gonna be noted, denoted by these two hashtags. So over here, I put two hashtags, it turns gray, and I say, this is a comment, okay? So this is just for a quick, brief comment that I want to make, okay? Another thing is a multi-line comment and that comment itself is going to start with a slash asterisk and it's going to end with an asterisk slash. So the stars are going to be on the inside and the slashes are going to be on the outside. And the most common place that you see these comments is at the top of your editor or it's going to be in between significant queries. So I want to just tell the user this query is used for determining customers to target in the Southern Hemisphere, right? So it's going to be more specific. It's going to span multiple lines and it's normally going to tell what this query is gonna be about. So you have these multi-line comments and you also have these one-liners. Now getting into the select clause itself, the select clause is gonna be used to query one or more tables. We're gonna start off beginner style. So we're only gonna look at one table today. And it's going to have the column names that you wanna select in that clause, separated by commas. So select column one, comma, select column two, comma. The way you put the columns in the select clause determines column order. So if you want to change the order of how it's printed out, then only thing you need to do is change the order of your columns in the select clause. From there, following the select clause, you're gonna have from, which is going to have the table name where you're selecting the columns from. You cannot have a select clause on its own. You must have this great partnership of select and from. 
So in our first example, we want to select the title and album ID from the album table within the Chinook database. So once again, if you don't have this practice database uploaded in SQLite, and if you don't have SQLite downloaded on your Mac or Windows, see my first video and it takes you through how to get set up and putting in this database into SQLite. So the first thing I'm gonna do is expand the album table and the columns. And here I see that it has three columns, okay? And it wants me to take in the title and the album ID. Now, SQL is case sensitive, it is spelling sensitive. So make sure that you always expand the columns, right? Just hit down this arrow next to columns so you can see exactly how everything is spelled. So it tells me it wants us to select those two columns. So I'm gonna type in select and I'm gonna have title, comma, and then I'm going to have, it probably isn't case sensitive, it's probably, it definitely is spelling sensitive though. And I'm gonna have album ID. And then I'm gonna have from the name of the database dot whatever the table name. And as you can see, as soon as I type out the database, it gives me some suggestions, okay? And it has the album pop right up for me. And then I'm going to end it with a semicolon, okay? So the last clause always gets a semicolon. So if we run this, we can see the output is select the title. If I scroll over, it also selected the album ID from the album database. So it looks like it gave us the correct output. So that's how we select the different columns from a specific table. Now, if I wanted to change the order of printout, only thing I have to do is put album ID first, comma title. And when I run this, it's gonna give me the album ID first. Okay, and then I can sort this album ID just by clicking it in this nice little grid view down below. Okay, and if you don't see the databases up here on your left-hand side, make sure you go to view up at the very, very top and make sure databases is checked, okay? So make sure you look for that view once you're in SQLite Studios and that you actually have checked the database on so you can look at all of the tables within the database. All right, so that's our first example, awesome. The next slide just gave us that great answer that we just went over. Now we wanna talk about how we can select all the columns from a specific table, okay? So in order to select all the columns from a table, you use this asterisk, okay? So it's gonna be select asterisk from whatever table you wanna select. This could be beneficial if your table isn't massive and you just wanna quickly look at your table, okay? Just to see the table structure and what columns are there. See at first glance if there's any missing values. So it's more for exploration of your data. But if you have a massive, massive, massive table, it might take a long time to select everything. So make sure you have a reason for selecting everything. But our tables are small in this database. So for this example, it wants us to select all columns from the album table. So we're just gonna put select and we're gonna have asterisk again. And once again, we're doing the albums table. So we're gonna name the database dot album. And then we're just going to run that. And we see when we scroll down that it actually selected all three of the columns. We know that this table only had three columns because when we expanded album on the left-hand side, we see that the column says three. So if you wanna select everything, you can use this asterisk. That's gonna select all of the columns. And we just have that printed out for you in the PowerPoint as well. And now the last thing that we're gonna cover is select distinct. So select distinct is used to eliminate duplicate rows based on a column. So it's gonna apply to all columns in the select clause. So if you have three columns in the select clause, it's gonna select distinct of all three of those columns together, okay? So we're just going to practice with selecting distinct of one column. And it wants us to select each unique state from the customer table. So I'm gonna collapse the album and I'm gonna expand customer. 
And I see that the columns are 13 and it does have steak here. So since this is a small table, the first thing I'm going to do is select everything because I want to see exactly how many rows is in this table. So I'm going to say from Chinook dot customer. And then I'm going to run that. And I see that I have 59 rows that's loaded. So I'm pretty sure there are going to be some duplicate states. It looks like SP is a duplicate state. So when I print out each distinct state, I should have way less than 59 rows, right? So now I'm gonna change this asterisk to select distinct. And I'm gonna call what column I want the distinct of, and that's state just to see where my customers lie. And it gave me 26 rows. So it looks like I have customers in 25 different states since there's this null value. And that may be interesting to you down the road. Maybe you want to replace that null value with something, maybe customers that have the state equal to null share a similar characteristic, et cetera. So that is how we remove duplicate rows by using select distinct. So just to recap, we went over select distinct. We also went over the asterisk and letting us select all columns. And we also learned how to select specific columns from a table, okay? We also focused on how to do one line and multi-line comments. And we also know that different softwares have different extensions and an extension in SQLite may not work in SAS. So that is our intro to SQL, all about the select clause. We are going to get into the where clause and subsetting our tables based off of conditions in the next lesson. As always, if you need to download this database, please look at lesson one. That link is going to be in the description. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. And thank you again for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. Bye-bye.